Hello, my name is Katie Williams. I'm a clinical nurse specialist working within the Living Well Service at Arthur Rank Hospice. When people visit our service, we hope to encourage them to consider their future care needs. In the following video, I hope to give you a brief understanding of advanced care planning and what that may involve. Why consider advanced care planning? We happily plan for all major events in life, such as weddings, birthdays, Christmas, holidays, and definitely for having a baby. Planning for dying and our own death is something we rarely do and may even put off. Even as a fit and healthy person, it's helpful to have an idea of what we might wish for at the end of life, and especially when faced with a life-limiting illness. We can never be certain when our health or life might change. What can be considered? There are several decisions that could be considered when planning for our future and for our end-of-life care. This can reduce our own stress and perhaps the stress of those we love as well. It may also offer a feeling of control at a time when there is often increased uncertainty. It is likely to be helpful to speak with your doctors or specialist nurse about what might happen in the future. It can be difficult to plan without some information about what to expect, even if some uncertainty remains. Putting plans in place, making arrangements, talking through plans with family and friends can be extremely emotional. It does not have to be achieved in one sitting and can be revisited when the time feels right. What to consider? There are several subjects that might be helpful to discuss with those important to you. These may include some or all of the list shown on the screen. It is important to remember that most of these documents are not legally binding. They do, however, provide a guide of someone's wishes and will be taken into account by any professionals involved in your care. Whilst you have the ability and capacity to be involved in decision making, you would always be asked for your thoughts and opinions. There are various resources that can be used to help guide the conversation and support you in planning. It is useful to take short notes for a reminder of what has been discussed. So, thinking about making a will. This is an important document to have, whatever age or stage of life you are at. Without a will, the law decides who will get your possessions, finances or property. You can make a will on your own, but it is generally best to use a solicitor. The Law Society can provide you with a list of local solicitors and there's a web address on the screen that can be reached by typing it into your search engine. Many people have heard of a lasting power of attorney, or LPOA, and is another document to consider. An LPOA is a legal document that allows you to appoint one or more person that you trust to make decisions on your behalf when you are unable to make them for yourself. It is important to think carefully about who you appoint and which decisions you are comfortable with them making. Some discussion about how they make decisions about your care and treatment or finances is helpful and also what happens if an attorney becomes unwell or dies. An LPOA can be made online using the government website and does not need a solicitor to make one. An address for the government website can be copied from the slide. As can be seen, there are two types of LPOA, one for health and welfare and one for property and finances. There are options regarding advanced statements of treatment and care. These are specific documents which you may wish to consider completing to offer thoughts or preferences about your care in the future. These documents may vary in different areas of the country. They may include treatments you would accept in the future, or what you would like to happen in an emergency. Whilst these documents are not legally binding, if you are unable to communicate your wishes, they are valuable in letting people know all about you and will help inform decisions about your treatment and care. An advanced decision to refuse treatment may be something to think about. In this document, you can be specific about which treatments you would not wish to be given in the future and under or in which circumstances. They must be written in a certain way to ensure they are legally binding, meaning they can be followed when needed. I would advise that you discuss this with your doctors or specialist nurses. Future care needs. 
or preferred priorities of care. It may be helpful to consider where you would like to be cared for in the future. This may be staying at home with help from your family or staying at home with paid carers coming into your house as often as required. You may decide you would prefer to be in a care home or hospice for end of life care. Things to consider are how you would pay for your care, if you are entitled to any benefits, any adaptations that may need to be made to your home, the possibility of moving closer to family or friends, and what support is available locally in the community. We don't often talk about planning for dependents or pets, or practical things like where we keep important documents, such as birth certificates or bank account details, but these are helpful and useful conversations to have. Health professionals may also speak about preferred place of care or preferred place of death. It's important to try and talk to your family and friends about any wishes you may have about how you may be cared for in your last short weeks or days of life. For example, you may have an idea about having peace and quiet or may prefer some specific music playing or the radio. Some people might like a good brightly lit room whilst others may prefer it fairly dark. Some people enjoy having their hand held or even a gentle hand massage, whilst for others this would not be welcome. Of course, you cannot always predict how you might feel and may change your mind as your health changes. And on to considering planning for and paying for your own funeral. Talking about what you might like for your funeral with your family and friends may provide great comfort knowing your funeral is how you want it to be. Some family members may find comfort in helping you to plan a funeral as part of their grieving process. This may include where you would like the service to be, if you would like to be buried or cremated, what songs or reading you would like, and some thoughts about a eulogy, and whether you would like flowers or donations to a specific organisation. You may also choose to plan the wake. If you choose to pay for your funeral costs in advance, you may wish to set up a funeral prepayment plan. You can find out more about this from the National Association of Funeral Directors. Again, there is a link on the screen. And finally, what's in it for me? It sounds like a number of stressful and emotional conversations. It can seem confusing as there are many ways to plan and each one is slightly different. The conversations can indeed be difficult, especially when speaking with loved ones. However, what people say to us when they've made plans are positive comments like, it feels like such a relief to have made plans that will help my family when I'm no longer able to help with decisions or I'm no longer here. It feels as if a weight has been lifted as my loved ones know my feelings. I can now get on with living the rest of my life, knowing I've done the best I can to prepare. Whatever you decide, it's important to discuss this with your loved ones and with the doctors, nurses or any other professionals involved in your care. This will help to relieve stress and enable clear planning. There is further information on the Arthur Rank website and the final slide shows a few suggestions for further reading. Thank you for watching.